number one, two, three, last man, Sergeant. Face post. What they do now, having numbered off, they run to their component parts, okay, and they wait for their reward. Mount gun! Mount gun! Notice that the number one will repeat the orders. So the guys that are either side of them clearly hear what's being said. Okay? So he's got the tripod into position. He's set that up. The number two then comes forward, lowers the gun into position onto the tripod. Put them, so both of them put the locking pins in place. Now, once they're nearly done, number three will have been watching that. He passes the ammunition box to number two. And once he's done that, you see he's connecting up a hose to the gun. Another, if you just um, hang the uh, bag on the gun. Hopefully, get no problem. Okay, number three then moves out of the way, having done his job. Now, if we just move a little bit closer this way, I'll explain a few things before I get them to do anything else. Now, the large jacket here is a water jacket. So that is how the gun is cooled. Right, that's, that's how it can cool the, uh, the barrel. Because that's going to get very hot very quickly with the amount of ammunition that's going to be fired through it. What will happen is if that water will then turn to steam, the steam will go down this, this tube, it will condense in the tube, turn back into water, and it will start to fill the bag. Now the bag, you can also uh, have it hanging over the, uh, the jacket of the gun. So it will, it will collect the water again. It doesn't cycle through, so you'd have to then every now and again top the gun up. So basically these, these weapons, as long as you had enough water, enough ammunition, and you've got a well-trained crew, these guns could fire continuously for hours. Okay. Uh, as well as the canvas bag, they quite often use uh, old petrol tins as, uh, as a collection method as well. Right. Carry on with the orders. See what happens next. <laughs> Load! Load! So there you can see the loading me method. Number two, he's supporting the ammunition to help with the feeding of that uh, ammunition belt. He's also raised his arm. Now the officer, or the sergeant, who would be giving the orders would be perhaps stood back here somewhere. So when they give the order to fire, then the officer will then lower their, their arm and the number two Yards advancing enemy infantry. Traversing fire. So that click there, which is deactivated, as you'll be glad to know, so it is perfectly safe unless you drop it on your foot. And you can see there he is tapping the gun. So he's firing it and he's giving it a tap. And that is just moving it slightly. And if you can imagine that whilst that only moves very slightly, at 600 yards, that's actually quite a, a big field of fire. Yeah. Stop! Unload! So all done as an efficient drill.
So you've seen how the gun's been moved forward, and now we'll see the reverse, what happens when we then need to move the gun somewhere else. Now, they're gonna move the gun back to where it was, but we could be moving them anywhere, that the section commander could be getting them to move it over to that wall, or up at the edge of the ditch, just by the edge of that track. These are the drills that they would have to do if they were moving that gun anywhere. Dismount gun! Dismount gun! So quite quick and efficient, but again, if you, as I said earlier, trying to keep up with infantry moving with a rifle, that's not really very efficient. Okay? It really, it, it's a specialised weapon, and that's why the machine gun corps was set up uh, towards the end of, of 1915. These guns were taken off the battalions, the infantry battalions, given the, machi the new machine gun corps, who had a different role. They, they, they were fire support, they were infantry support, um, they also had an artillery role. So basically you can fire that gun on a high traverse, so that's, that's up in the air, over a hill and range it, you can have a spotter and range it say on a strategic point like a crossroads where perhaps the enemy are moving supplies. And then perhaps at random every 10, 20 minutes or so, you might fire off a burst of uh, two, a belt of 250 rounds of ammunition, and it just then makes that crossing point, that crossroads, a, diff a, a hazard for the enemy, but it's an important spot for, for them. Okay, but it just slows the movement of things like supply. And that's just one example of the sort of things that um, the, the machine gun corps could, could do with the weapon. What I'll do is we'll just move it once more and then back again, just again so you get a feel for the, the drills. Fall out! Fall in! Number! One, two, three, last mile, Sergeant! Take post! Mount gun! Mount gun! Load! Boom! Unload! Dismount gun! Dismount gun! At ease! Stand easy. Well done, lads.
right so again that gives you an idea sort of moving at pace there what's involved in moving the gun so all nice and efficient actually well done they, that was very slick um, but again keeping up with an infantryman with a rifle is, is not ideal so that concludes our presentation on the Vickers machine gun um, in a moment we'll be taking it back down to the main display if you've got any detailed questions about the Vickers by all means have, have a chat to us down there again man to ask with uh, private Randall who will be able to tell you all sorts about it our next presentation is at half past three and that will be sorry half past two and that will be musketry training which is essentially rifle training and for that we will be doing a demonstration using blank ammunition okay so that will be at half past two uh, the last presentation that we'll do uh, for the day is at 3.30 and that will be a short drill demonstration in the arena here. But again, it's all activity, training activity that the soldiers um, of uh, number one uh, training depot um, in battalion would have had done on this site during the First World War from August 1914 into 1915. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.